Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, you've read the title, The David Wood Dilemma. You're probably asking yourself, what is the David Wood Dilemma? Well, it revolves around David's argument, the one that he popularised, the one that he made up, the ridiculous claim of the Quran endorses the past scriptures, the Bible, as he titles it, the Islamic Dilemma or the Quranic Dilemma. Now, this has already been refuted and addressed, and I've, there's a playlist in the description which you can go and watch. But in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how David Wood himself refutes this argument. Whichever way you look at it, if you just look at it from the Quranic perspective or the Quran and the Tafsir, each one of them alone proves that the past scriptures have been corrupted. Now, Full Metal Theist last year made a video response to this Islamic dilemma and he used commentaries. And in David Wood's response to Sam Shimoon, they criticised him saying, why are you going to commentaries? Why are you going to commentaries? So thus, we have to logically conclude that David Wood says, and he's trying to argue that you can't appeal to commentaries in the Quran. Just notice, ladies and gentlemen, it's, hey, why does your God say this? Oh, well, let's go to Ibn Kathir. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. I mean, just for people, for the record, so people will understand, Ibn Kathir is writing over 700 years <clears throat> after the reported death of Muhammad. Note, I said reported death of Muhammad. So if you go by the traditional Islamic narrative, which uh, David and I are aware, many are not calling into question, even our good brethren, and fellow soldier in Christ, you know, soldier in arms, the Lord Jesus Christ, blessed J.B. Smith Miley. If we go by the Islamic narrative, Muhammad died around 632 AD. Ibn Kathir is writing over 700 years after the reported death of Muhammad. So this is 700 years after Muhammad, his prophethood, and the sending down of the Quran. Yet in his debate the Sheikh Uthman, when he came to Balboa Park, look at what he says when Sheikh Uthman references chapter 2, verse 79. <laughs> Going to serve 279. I am. Oh my goodness. Of course. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Gonna, let me. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Are we going to look at the commentaries? <sighs> no one hold agrees on. with you. Hold on. So, do you understand what the dilemma is, and the dilemma that David Wood is in, and how he's indirectly submitted to the fact that this Islamic dilemma, this Quranic dilemma that he invented, is nothing but rubbish? No. I'll explain it to you. So he critiques Full Metal Theist for referring to tafsir, for appealing to tafsir, Ibn Kathir, commentaries. Yet, in his debate with Sheikh Uthman, Sheikh Uthman references 279 of the Qur'an. And David Wood says, shall we go to the commentaries? You see how happy he was with himself? He's like, yes! Commentaries, let's go to the commentaries, they refute you. Well, hang on a second, David. You're the same guy who critiqued Full Metal Feast for going to tafsir. But you're saying, let's look at tafsir. Which one is it? You can't have both. Option one, he takes the Qur'an only approach where he does not look at a single tafsir of the Qur'an. If he does this, one, he admits that his videos on his channel where he's referred to tafsir are rendered useless. Because, after all, David Wood can't appeal to tafsir. But, if you take the Qur'an only approach, the Qur'an proves that the past scriptures have been corrupted. You have chapter 5 verse 13 which mentions the word yuharifu, which means change. Chapter 5 verse 44 which talks about how the rabbis were entrusted with the scriptures you got chapter 2, verse 79. Chapter 6, verse 91. Also when the Qur'an criticises Christian belief, the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, and it criticises Jewish beliefs, such as Ezra being the son of Allah. This proves that the past scriptures have been corrupted according to the Qur'an alone. How is that? Well, when you read the Qur'an, it talks about the Torah and the Injil. It talks about what Allah has revealed in it, what Allah has revealed. These things that Christians and Jews say, Allah did not reveal as obvious because Allah is criticizing it in the Quran. Thus, we must logically ask ourselves, how did this get there? How did those beliefs get there? How did they believe these things? And they got it from the scriptures which have been corrupted. That's option one. Option two is David Wood says, yes, we can look at tafsir. Yes, we can look at commentaries, which in that case, it proves that the past scriptures have been corrupted because it references Quran verses. It references the Prophet, peace be upon him, and what he said. It also references what people like Ibn Abbas said about past scriptures. So whichever option David Wood decides to choose, option one, Quran only approach, option two, the Quran and Tafsir, they both prove alone that the past scriptures have been corrupted. And that is the David Wood dilemma. Now I'm going to play a little clip. You saw how he critiqued Full Metal Theist for appealing to a Quranic commentary, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. I expect that David Wood has never, ever, ever, ever appealed to Tafsir Ibn Kathir in any of his videos. If he has, he's a hypocrite.
If the Quran 2946 commands you to tell the people of the book that we believe in what has been revealed to them, why then we tell them that we disbelieve in their Bible? Easy. Very easy. As Ibn Kathir reports in the <coughs> Tafsir exegesis. Hey, hey, Sam, but before, yeah. before we, before we, uh, <laughs> before we continue here, my goodness, just, just notice, just notice, ladies and gentlemen, it's, hey, why does your God say this? Oh, well, let's go to Ibn Kathir. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. I mean, just for people, for the record, so people will understand, Ibn Kathir is writing over 700 years <clears throat> after the reported death of Muhammad. Ladies and gentlemen, just to, just to recap this point, because it's important. Here, look, Allah says that he's confirming the scriptures that were revealed to us. And as we'll see, this is referring to the Torah and the gospel. But Ibn Kathir says, wait a minute, why can't you tell us what Allah says? Exactly. Why can't you just go to another Quran verse and say, hey, here's what Allah says. Because, ladies and gentlemen, here's something we're going to see over and over and over again. Muslims have to tell us what Allah really means. <laughs> Let's go. Islam's greatest commentator of all time, Ibn Kathir, describes the historical context for us. I'll just read what he said in the Battles of the Prophet. Let's read the most respected Muslim commentary in history on this verse. Tafsir of Ibn Kathir on chapter 3 verse 28 of the Quran. One of the most respected Muslim commentators of all time, Qurtubi, comments on Surah 61 verse 14. And again I'm reading Halali Khan that provides explanation within parentheses in case there's any confusion about the meaning of this verse here are three classic muslim commentaries on surah 65 verse 4 of the quran because it, it says it, unless it's to guard yourselves against them and so the claim would be oh you're guarding yourselves against them so they're coming to kill you uh no that's not what the text is saying at all I did want to read the commentary of Ibn Kathir on here. This is part three of the al firdaus edition of Ibn Kathir. Let's read a bit of what the Darussalam edition left out. Chapter 61, verse 14 of the Quran. Um, Allah says that he aided the true followers of Jesus until they became uppermost. Now, uh, I suppose you can interpret that in different ways. Commentators such as Yusuf Ali. In Ibn Kathir's Battles of the Prophet, we read about the historical background of Surah 9, verses 28 to 29. But just let me give you the commentary of Tafsir Jalalain, one of the most respected Muslim commentaries of all time. Let me give you the words of Ibn Kathir, one of the greatest, uh, the greatest Sunni Islamic commentator of all time. Uh, let me read, go ahead and read um, commentary on this. In his commentary on this verse, Yusuf Ali says, If you let just the Muslim scholars explain to us, not me, not David Wood, Muslim scholars such as Ibn Kathir al-Qurtubi. We have a comment here. We have some commentary um, from Fath al-Bari. Certain modern Muslim scholars are beginning to acknowledge that they've got a problem here. Dr. Abdullah Saeed, professor of Arab and Islamic studies at the University of Melbourne. Let's go with how Omar, the second caliph, understood this very passage. This comes from Ibn Kathir, his exposition of chapter 5, verse 51, and chapter 5, verse 57. So here, here's how he interprets the passage. And I'll actually read from Ibn Kathir. Let me read it. Ibn Kathir, not me, not you, not some Yahudi. Guys, go back and read Ibn Kathir, any commentator. Because when we go to the commentators, we find out what these what these uh, what these terms mean, what it means for spreading mischief in the land. This guy is as Sunni as you can possibly be, ladies and gentlemen, and he's quoting other Sunni authorities. So let's go ahead and look at uh, Ibn Kathir's commentary. We know uh, about about people like Ibn Abbas and what we read in Al Tabari. Let me give you a few quotes. Ibn Kathir, Islam's greatest commentator on the Quran, as you know, says many classical Muslim commentators, unlike Muslims today, base their views on the Quran. Muslims have to tell us what Allah really means. 